Our next question is from Brian. And Brian says, hi guys, I have a three-year-old German Shepherd. He's my first Schutzen dog and we're trying for a Schutzen too next weekend. My problem is that my dog has developed a munchy grip on the sleeve. He's not biting hard or pulling on the sleeve. He just bites and readjusts over and over. He's a very good dog, lots of courage and strong in defense. I'm not certain, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not certain what has created this or how to fix it or even if it can be fixed, but here's a little background information. We do not have a great deal of experience or have a regular helper in our club. Therefore, some of the bite work has been less than desirable in terms of presentation uh, on the sleeve and reading the dog. I'm the most experienced with doing helper work, which is not very experienced. So I try and guide the helper while, while I'm handling my own dog. Unfortunately, sometimes this leads to pressure from both sides and it seems to me that this pressure combined with poor mechanics, lack of knowledge, and a lack of presence by inexperienced people trying to learn the work is deteriorating my dog's grip. Is there anything that I can do to make his bite more firm and calm? Uh, if there is, uh, should I also stop doing protection with inexperienced helpers? Yes. <laughs> that was a quick, uh, that was a quick Q &A. He, uh, <laughs> it, it, you have a, a really good analysis of what's going on there. So it's it, it's difficult to, without when we start talking about protection work and we start talking about how the dogs are using their mouth uh, in protection work. There, without kind of seeing the dog and seeing the dog over a period of time, it's difficult to know what is just uh, genetic in the dog and what's caused by stress and bad work because certain dogs just use their mouths a certain way genetically, and there's very little we can do to guide that. If everything goes perfect, it may change in small amounts, uh, but big changes in that um, tend not to be able to be made over the long term. So there's genetic components to that kind of biting, but uh, the, he hit it on the, uh, the nail on the head in that if you're working on inexperienced helpers and you're trying to teach people how to do protection work at the same time you're teaching your dog, that almost never goes well. Uh, unless you have a just absolutely exceptional dog with a very hardwired genetic gripping behavior, you'll see a deterioration in your dog's work for sure. So I would say, assuming the dog's attitude is good and the dog's confidence good and power is good, you have two choices. One is I would stop working the dog on anybody that's inexperienced if you have access to experienced people. Or you may just have to let go of certain aspects of the work because your training situation doesn't allow it. In an ideal world, I would only work my dog on people with experience that knew what they were doing that would try to execute my specific training plan so that you could keep the work consistent and uh, for the dog. But that's un unfortunately not everybody's situation. And there are many, many people around the country that do not have regular uh, access to experienced helper work. It's one of the hardest things about protection sports in this country right now is a lack of good experienced training helpers. Um, and as a result, people are left with less than ideal circumstances. And sometimes you just have to make the best of those. I would try to eliminate the conflict between you and the dog by not having pressure come from both places. What you should do is if you do decide to work on people with less experience, you need to try to iron out their job before the session so that you can focus on being supportive of your dog and not having to try to direct them and the dog at the same time. But if at all possible, I would stop working on inexperienced helpers. That's probably where the problem lies.